Hi everyone, so I have pulled you over to the other side of my bedroom to <laughs> introduce you to my overflowing book trolley today. Um, I did a video like this several months ago, last year, what is time? I don't know where my book trolley last time had gotten a bit out of control and today it is also out of control so we are going to sort through it right now. So this is a book trolley that I bought online, it's by a company called Doe Works but you can also get book trolleys from John Lewis, Hobbycraft, Ikea, I think it was quite easy to put together. I love this colour yellow and I use it as well, the bottom one is kind of just throwing stuff on there. There's no rhyme or reason to the bottom one, which is not advisable. The middle one is all the books I have read in the month that I haven't yet wrapped up. And the top one is all the books that I have bought but have not yet hauled, or books that I have been sent for review. And as I'm filming this, it's about halfway through August. So uh, actually, I don't know if you can see, let me tip the camera down slightly. I have had a brilliant reading month so far. There are some books in here that I really did not enjoy and some that I have really loved and I really look forward to talking to you about them. So we can have a brief overview of these in a minute. I will talk to you or at least show you what I've been reading recently, but of course I will speak about them in my wrap up. But to bring you back up here, this top shelf is massively out of control. There's a wig cap in here. Why is there a wig cap? There's some sellotape. Why is there some sellotape? As well as, as I said, books that I haven't hauled yet. So this video is also going to be a book haul as well as a sort out. And it's always satisfying to have a bit of a tidy, isn't it? So if you would like to join me and tidy your books at the same time, you're very welcome to do so. Um, I have a few more books than I would normally at the moment because we are coming up to autumn and that is prime book release time in the UK. So I have quite a few proofs here, which I'm excited to show you. Let's deal with this shelf by shelf. So let's do the top shelf first and let's decant, I think, and then I can talk to you about these books before I put them away on my shelves. One, two, three, four wig caps. It's definitely not where they live. Okay, here we go. I have emptied the top shelf apart from these which I'm leaving on the top shelf for now. So these are literary magazines that I've bought recently and a couple of months ago I did a video called Reading Five Literary Journals where I read five literary journals, it was a reading vlog and I'm going to do another one where I read five more. So I've been purchasing a few issues that have taken my fancy recently so I'll briefly show you them here but there will be a reading vlog coming up at some point where I read them. So this is a copy of The Gasling and this is Tales of Ghosts, The Macabre and The Oh So Strange and I just think that this sounds really wonderful. It also has illustrations in here as well. It actually has no one in that I've heard of before and I can't remember where I heard about this magazine but I don't mind because it seems to be delightfully creepy and that is obviously right up my street so that's one of them. I also bought the most recent issue of Poetry Wales. Then Tamarind which is a collection of non-fiction, fiction and poetry about science. This is the most recent issue of The Rialto. The most recent issue I tumbled over my words there, the most recent issue of Poetry London. This is um, Extra Teeth magazine issue two and this one is Counterpoint. So I will be doing a reading vlog, reading some of those at some point in the next month or so. So those can stay on the trolley but everything else can go back on my shelf. This is a book that I was sent unsolicited, but it is the newest Elmer book. It's called Elmer and the Lost Treasure, which I think has just come out. We have this, which was a gift from Sana, actually, that's been sitting on my book trolley. She did a watercolor of that corner of my bedroom with the bookcase when there was the autumnal vine growing all the way up the side, which is very lovely. So I'll find somewhere to put that. Um, the Braille book, Learning Braille, always actually, I'll put that back, sits on top of the trolley, which I'm slowly making my way through. This is also from Zana, which went with the uh, painting. This was a birthday card with some dried flowers on. It's really lovely. Again, we'll find somewhere safe to put that. Right now we're onto books, which is what actually should have been <laughs> on, on that. So I have, oh, another zine to go with the journals. This is Bedzine, which is a collection of 
poems and pieces of artwork flash fiction from disabled and chronically ill writers about their relationship with their beds. Right, we're actually on to books now. This was one I showed in a reading vlog recently. This is a short story collection by Hasong Nan, who wrote Flowers of Mould, which I'm currently reading and really enjoying. This is translated from the Korean by Janet Hong, and this is a collection of creepy short stories. As you know, I have a massive soft spot for creepy fairy tale inspired stories and if you're new I am an author who writes stories like that. My latest book is called The Sister Who Ate Her Brothers which is coming out in October. Here is the cover. There is a pre-order link in the description box down below if you would like to go and find out more. But this one I'm really excited to get to and I will also link in the description box my video where I discussed the history of the fairy tale Bluebeard because the fairy tale itself is gruesome but the history behind it is also really, really interesting. Another short story collection that I have bought recently is Variations by Juliet Jacks, and this uses some found material and also research and history to create a collection of short stories about trans characters across the decades in Britain. So we're going from, well not even decades, centuries, from Oscar Wilde's London to austerity era Belfast, a drag bar in Liverpool just after the decriminalisation of homosexuality, Manchester's protest against Clause 28 and Brighton in the 2000s. So we're darting here, there and everywhere, which sounds really intriguing. I'm also fascinated by authors using found material to write fiction. Um, and two examples of books that I've read that do that really well are The Need for Better Regulation of Outer Space by Pippa Goldschmidt and also Tracy K. Smith's Wade in the Water. It is the most wonderful book, so I would recommend that. But yes, this is a short story collection that I have bought recently. I requested a few review copies from Dead Ink Books. This has the most joyous cover. I love it, it's colour pink, stunning, especially with that blue, amazing. It's called The Hierarchies by Roz Anderson and this has just come out. It says, I am a humanoid pleasure doll, an intelligent embodied, but please call me Sylvie. So in a society that is divided between those who are born and those who are created, fully sentient robots exist to cater to humans every whim. Sylvie is designed to her husband's specifications and excels at pleasing him until she returns from the hospital with her memory missing. So she returns to an environment that she should know really well and then I think is reevaluating the situation because she has no memory. So something that was very familiar to her before is now completely alien and she's feeling very... Disengaged is not the right word. She's having a disassociation with her body and her role in this family as well. So it says from the top floor of her luxurious home, as Sylvie watches the family that is not her own, she begins to imagine a life beyond the lock gates. Could she find freedom with other dolls just like her? Does she dare to disobey the hierarchies of her programming? And what might it mean to live and love like a human? Um, I just think this sounds really, really interesting. So I look forward to that. Oh, this is another collection of short stories, actually, which is also from Dead Ink Press. This is called Dead Relatives by Lucy McKnight Hardy. And again, I love this cover. This sounds quite cre creepy. It is actually coming out on October the 21st. So in time for Halloween, Iris has never left the big house in the country she shares with Mammy and the servants. When the ladies arrive, she finds that she must appease her dead relatives. Other stories in this collection explore themes of motherhood and the fragile body, family dynamics and small town tensions, unusual traditions and metamorphosis. Sounds great. The final one that I requested for review from Dead Ink Books is this one, which I'm so intrigued by. It's called Cat Step by Alison Irvine. And this is about a woman who moves to Scotland with her four-year-old daughter, I think, a young daughter anyway. And she's escaping something and she doesn't really want people to pay attention to her. But then she leaves her daughter in the car while she goes to buy something from a shop. And this causes a lot of attention and judgment. And suddenly she's thrown into the spotlight in this little village and everyone wants to know who she is and is judging her and that is not what she wanted when she moved to this new town. So I'm sure there's lots of things going on below the surface. So that sounds really, really wonderful. Then we have another um, literary journal. I know I said there were no more literary journals but they have been breeding apparently but this is sick issue three and this has just come out or is just about to come out. This is um, 
my contributor copy because I have a new piece of non-fiction in here which is called In My Memory I Am A Fish. So I will link this in the description box down below if you're interested in reading it. It is a collection of work by disabled and chronically ill writers. Let's move on to nature. I recently bought two nature books. This is Dara McNulty's book, The Diary of a Young Naturalist, and this is his memoir. I think Dara is great, talking about growing up as an autistic teenager, coping with the uprooting of home, school, and his mental health while pursuing his life as a conservationist and environmental activist. And the other nature book that I bought is one I've also heard great things about. Dara's book has won lots of awards. I think the Wainwright Prize as well last year or the year before. Again, time means nothing. But anyway, this is Anita Sethi's book. It is called I Belong Here, a journey along the backbone of Britain. And this is travel writing, her talking about walking along the Pennines in Britain. It's an exploration of belonging. So she encountered, was subject to a racist attack from a racist person who told her that she should go back to where she came from. Um, which meant that she then was suffering anxiety and panic attacks when she was thinking about going out into nature because she was made to feel like she shouldn't belong there, which is obviously not cool in the slightest. Jenny Reddy's book, Wonderland, which I read last year and loved, is also brilliant. Um, there is such a tendency to romanticize the countryside and everything about it. And there's lots of important things that we should be discussing whilst also loving the landscape as well. So this one on the TBR. Then I bought this novel here, which I'm hoping is going to be really good. I hope so. It's got a lot of buzz around it. So I might do a, are these books worth the hype video soon? It just came out. It's called Mrs. Ward. No, it's not. It's called Mrs. March. Where did I get Ward from? Oh, there's a quote from Katrina Ward on the front. Mrs. March by Virginia Vito. And this is about, I haven't read too much into it because I just heard the, the vague premise of the book and thought I'm really intrigued by this. So this is about a woman whose husband is a writer and he writes a novel and she hasn't read it. I don't know if she's not allowed to read it or she just doesn't particularly want to read it. And I think she goes to the supermarket one day and a woman who has read the book says to her, how did you feel about him basing his main character on you? Because the book is not very favorable about this female character and she's suddenly really uncomfortable thinking, well, how how much is this character like me and what has he said about our relationship? And now what does everybody in our town think of me? I don't know why, but it's making me think of um, Meg Wallace's The Wife, which I haven't read, but I have seen the film with Glenn Close and Glenn Close rules all. I know that this has been optioned for a film. It's, um, I think, gonna star Elizabeth Moss. I don't know if she's also directing it. So yeah, there's a lot of hype around this book, but I'm very much here for curtain twitching and betrayal in writing. So I'm hoping that it lives up to my expectations, which granted are really, really quite high. I requested the new Leila Slamani book from Faber. This cover reminds me of Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller. This is the first in a trilogy. It's called The Country of Others. I loved Lullaby. I didn't love her second book, Adele, but also I can't, well, I have stopped thinking about it now, but I did think about that book for a long time, even though I didn't particularly love it. And that's always really interesting. So this is translated from the French by Sam Taylor. And as I said, it's the first in a trilogy. It's set in 1944 about a woman called Mathilde who finds herself falling deeply in love with um, someone called Amin, a Moroccan soldier billeted in her town fighting for the French. After the liberation, Mathilde leaves her country to follow her new husband to Morocco, but life here is unrecognisable to this brave and passionate young woman. So it's about her trying to fit in there, um, losing her sense of self, identity. I think it sounds wonderful. I, mean, I don't often read series anymore, and given this has only just come out, we're probably going to be waiting a while for the second one. But, you know, it's Leila Slamani, so I make an exception. In last month's haul, I spoke about Amos Totola and how I've been really intrigued by their work. This is another one of their books I have bought. It's called The Village, Witch Doctor and Other Stories. So this is about Yoruba legends. So retellings of fairy tales. Always keen to read fairy tales 
from various different places around the world, I was very kindly sent a finished copy of The Unheard by Nikki French, which is coming out in September. As you know, I've spoken about this so much, I'm currently reading all of their books, so this is their most recent one. Once I've read all of them, I will be making a video talking about all 26, 27 of their books and which ones I would recommend, but that one is one that I will be getting to very soon. I've got a couple of uh, thrillers here. This one I love the cover of, and this is coming out, when are you coming out? Oh, it doesn't say because it's a finished copy, but I think it's coming out in the autumn. So this is The Second Woman, and this was one of my most, or is one of my most anticipated releases for this year. It's by Louise May, and it's about a woman who falls in love with a very controlling man, and she thinks that everything's perfect until his first wife comes back and won't leave them alone. And I don't know any more about it, and I don't want to know any more about it than that. Um, this is translated from the French as well. It's translated by Louise Rogers Lalaurie. And I think, again, this has already been optioned for a film. I think it's got quite a lot of buzz around it. This is a book that's coming out in October. And this is a haunted house novel. It's called Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumfit. It says, this is a brutal, unflinching haunted house novel that takes readers from the well of the literary Gothic up through Brighton's queer scene and out into the heart of modern day trans experience in the UK. Yes, please. Thank you. Do we need to know more? Let's read a little bit more. Three years ago, Alice spent one night in an abandoned house with her friends, Isla and Hannah. Since then, things have not been going well. Alice is living a haunted existence, selling videos of herself, cleaning for money, going to parties she hates, drinking herself to sleep. She hasn't spoken to Isla since they went into that house. She hasn't seen Hannah either. Memories of that night torment her mind and her flesh, but when Isla asks her to return to the house and walk past the keep out sign over the sick earth where teenagers dare to each other to venture, she knows that she must go. I got shivers just reading that blurb. I'm very excited for that one. This is another short story collection that's coming out in the autumn. It's called The Dolls by Ursula Scavinius. And this is translated from the Danish by Jennifer Russell. And these are stories all about family and hauntings. It says a big sister descends into the family basement. Another sister refuses her younger brother. A third sister with memory loss is on the run and offered shelter by Nopler, a man both an ally and an enemy. A fourth set of siblings travel to Hungary with their late mother in a coffin. They each have a different version of their mother's story. In this book, characters are played by unexplained illnesses and oblique human-made disasters and environmental losses. Again, it sounds wonderful. We've got some poetry here, so I've got a few poetry pamphlets. This is Tracked by Jane Hartstrom, who is a disabled writer whose work I've fallen in love with recently. This is The Neighbourhood by Hannah Lowe, which I've bought specifically for a video that will be coming up in the next few months. Um, this is called Fierce Light, and I think this is something that I was sent for review along with a book that I had requested. So this is Poets Responding to the Centenary of the Battle of the Somme. And then this one is a story by Louise Finnegan called Muscle and Mouth, which is one of the fly on the wall shorts. They have a new series of um, pamphlets. And this is about a girl who's getting ready to go to university and has been told she should stop hanging out with her friends because they're a bad influence. And Jessica Andrews, who wrote Saltwater, said that Muscle and Mouth made me feel the fracture of my own Northern identity deep in my gut. It made me ache for home. It reminded me that leaving a place means giving pieces of yourself away. And then two poetry books that I am, I keep saying very excited about, but I am very excited about, are these, which are some of my most anticipated releases. So this is Ray Antropus's new collection called All the Names Given. If you've been here a while, you will know that I loved his first full-length collection, which was called The Perseverance. This is going to be, if it's the same themes as his first one. This is going to be a book about family and belonging and race and deafness and I love his work so much. And then this is Pilgrim's Bell by Kaver Akbar and Kaveh wrote a collection called Calling a Wolf a Wolf which was one of my favourite books of the year in 2018 or 2017. 
Oh, I don't remember, but I love, love, loved it. And this is his second full-length collection. This is actually not coming out in the UK until next year, but I bought the American edition because I need to read it because his words are so good. And then I have two books here on disability. This is Demystifying Disability, What to Know, What to Say, and How to Be an Ally. So this is covering, I think, basic disability topics, especially for non-disabled people and how to be an ally. And I've seen Rebecca Tausig say how great this book is, so I agreed to accept a review copy when the press release landed in my email inbox. And this is a picture book called Splash by Claire Cashmore and it's illustrated by Sharon Davey. Claire is a Paralympian and this is about, I assume it draws a lot on her own experiences. It says, this is Claire, yes, yeah, it is, because her name is also Claire. This is Claire, she has big dreams, she can do anything, her sisters can do, and more. But there is one thing Claire won't do, the water in the swimming pool makes her feel squirmy inside, follow her sisters, no way, not today. So this is a book about normalizing limb difference and you know, I'm always here for that. So as you can see, the top shelf, can you see? Let me, let, let me, let me show you, let me get a better angle here. There we go, la da. So the top shelf now is looking much, much, much better. The bottom shelf, again, wig caps. I think I need a dedicated drawer for wig caps. They definitely don't live in the book trolley. Um, we've got a few things here that can go. So we've got an empty box that had FFP2 masks in. That can definitely go. Um, it's looking okay apart from that. We just got some postcards uh, at the bottom here, which I sometimes use when I'm sending signed books to people. And then the middle shelf, also I can't tidy too much because this is the shelf of books that I've read but haven't yet reviewed. So these need to stay here until I do my wrap up. But let me quickly show you what we've got here as a little, a little spoiler for wrap up. If you watched my vlog where I was reading Women in Translation, you will know that I read The Mad Woman's Ball, the Kirstie A. Scomswold book, uh, Ludmilla's book. We have a poetry collection here in Spanish, which I read. A book that I read right at the beginning of the month was Underbelly by Anna Whitehouse, and I adored it so much. All of the chef's kisses. So if you would like a tense, page-turning book, I would highly recommend that one. Of course, we have a Nikki French, because I, I, of course I've read a Nikki French book this month. Don't be ridiculous. Uh, I did pick up a B Banana Yoshimoto book for the rest of Women in Translation Month, and I'm hoping to read a few more books in translation before the end of August. Um, and then tucked away at the back here, we have a few more. And at the moment, I am actually listening to this book here, which is Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death by Selena Godin. The way that she narrates this book is a joy. I just love listening to Selena read her work, and I have done for, for years and years and years, and it's just a delight. I think that the beginning of the book in particular reminds me of Ali Smith. It is sharp and witty, but I will talk about it more in my wrap up, because obviously I haven't finished reading it yet. So these are, these are the books that I have read so far this month, with some tucked in at the back there too. Then we have the literary journals, at the top which I will get to soon and then I am surrounded by books now that I need to put away on my bookshelves and now my book trolley is looking much neater this is much much better we can live with this I'm pleased um so I will list all the books that I talked about in the description box down below if that is helpful to you I would love to know how you are what books you have purchased or read recently let me know in a comment down below if you're new and you would like to subscribe that would be lovely. I talk about books here as well as the representation of disability and disfigurement and the history of fairy tales. I hope you're having a good week and I will speak to you soon. Sending lots of love. Bye!